This conference will now be recorded. All right. Let's continue. Today, let's see. Hey, today, let's see how to deploy the SAP Commerce site in uh, on premise cloud. Today, let's see how to deploy. So assume that we have developed the site. Assume that we have developed the site. Okay, assume that we have developed the site. After develop, okay, after develop, how to deploy, how to deploy this, this, this uh, shopping site for on-premise location, for on-premise and for cloud. So that means, let's say example, we have developed this site. Can you see this one, please? Let's say we have developed this site. How to develop the site? We already seen. Let's say we have developed this site. After developing, where to deploy, where to host it? You can deploy, you can host in on-premise. You can deploy, you can host in the cloud. I already explained what is the meaning of cloud in the initial days. You guys remember? I already explained what is the meaning of cloud in the initial days. Do you guys remember or you need to recollect it again? I'll just recollect it once. Okay. Okay. So, so please remember this. Let's say we develop this site. We develop this site after developing. So the question is where to deploy, where to host it. We can deploy, we can host in on-premise or we can deploy, we can host in cloud. We can, we can, we can, we can deploy, we can host this in on-premise or we can deploy, we can host this in the cloud. So then what is the difference between on-premise and the cloud? Okay, so let's take the small uh, table on-premise and the cloud. <laughs> on-premise and the cloud. So I always compare on-premise is like a own house. Okay, your own house. Okay, so cloud is like a rented house. This is the simplest way to understand. On-premise is like a own house, your own house. Cloud is like a rented house. On-premise is like a your own house. Cloud is like a rented house. In case of own house, if you want to own house in, okay, if you want to own house in high tech city area, so you need lots of initial investment, right? So let's say two C or three C is required. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes. If we, if you want rented house in a rented house in high tech city area, okay, rented house in uh, uh, rented house in high tech city area, then you need two L to four L. That's it. That much of big difference between on premise and cloud. So cloud means someone will give the resources for you. Okay, on premise means all the resources you are responsible all the resources you you are responsible so here resources are provided by some some other person resources are provided for us okay so when i say resources what does it mean okay let's say house okay lighting okay uh, then uh, uh, house, lighting, colors, all these things you need to take care. Colors, uh, uh, okay. All these things you need to take care. In the software terminology, in the software terminology, what does it mean? Operating system, okay, network, operating system, network, database, servers, storages, all these things, okay data, all these things you need to take care. In case of cloud, cloud is nothing but the rented house. 
rented house means what house lighting colors all these things someone will provide for you that means what operating system network database server all these things someone will provide for you so you will be paying the rent that's it okay as these resources so we we as these resources are provided by vendor so we will pay rent to them we will pay rent for them so this is the excellent advantage with the on premise versus cloud this is the excellent advantage with the on premise and cloud in the house terminology so these are the like you need to take care of the house you need to take care of the lighting you need to take care of the colors you need to take care of the uh, water you need to take care of the plumbing everything you need to take care here so in the software terminology operating system network database server storages okay application all these things you need to take care you need to buy you need to maintain but in case of rented house these are all someone will provide as someone is providing you will pay the rent to for them you will pay the rent for them is that clear are you guys are there yes sir okay good next so the next one is what um, so let's say uh, you have the own house in high tech city okay you have the own house in high tech city and uh, because of your job you want to move to other location is this easier is this easy no this is a difficult but uh, let's say you have a rented house in high tech city area and because of job you want to move to other location is that easy is that easy yes right yes yes so now software example let's understand the software example what is the software example let's say you have oracle database today okay and you want to go to mysql database okay you want to go to mysql database it's a difficult year so in case of uh, cloud so if you have oracle database today you can tell them that okay you don't want oracle database anymore it's like a giving a notice period so let's say you want to go to some other house if you want to go to some other house you will just give a one month notice to them and you will move to whatever database you want so here what happened in case of oracle in case of oracle you might have been already taken two years license three years license like that now suddenly if you want to go tomorrow there is a lot of challenges there is a lot of challenges okay next okay next let's say because of um, disaster recovery okay okay so disaster recovery so that means because of nature so because of nature something happens who is responsible here so you are responsible now so because of uh, nature something happens to the rented house are you going to lose anything nothing nothing <laughs> so owner is responsible so that means what so let's say if you want to understand the software terminology let's say operating crosses operating system crosses you are not going to lose anything sorry in case of on premise you need to take care everything in case of cloud so that vendor will take care <laughs> that vendor will take care that's it now let's say upgrade okay upgrade so let's say now you have um okay let's say colors 
So you have different colors. Let's say right now you have white color and you want to go to some other color. Okay, you want to go to some other color. So let's say you want to go to, okay, uh, sky blue color. So then you need to take care of everything. In case of a rented house, what you will do here? You will tell to owner, hey, I am staying from last two years. Can you change the color? If he is not changing the color, what he will do? If he is not changing the color, what he will do? He will say that, okay, I am going to vacate the house. I will go to new house, right? So that's why in case of here, upgrade vendor will take care. So for example, now understand the software terminology. So let's say we have Oracle uh, uh, 9, uh, 9.8 today and you want to go to Oracle 12C. Then who is responsible here? Who is responsible here? You are responsible. In case of a cloud, vendor is responsible. Vendor will take care of these upgrades. That's it. That is the power of on-premise and cloud. So that means in case of cloud, the resources, when I say resources, what does it mean? Operating system, network, database, server, storages, all these things, vendor will provide. As vendor is providing, you will be paying the rent for them. As vendor is providing, you will pay the rent for them. Is that clear? So that's why there is a nice diagram for this. I'll just go through that. Okay, so there is a nice presentation for that. I will just go through that quickly. <laughs> then we will come out from the cloud. So I already covered this here. <clears throat> so you can go back and refer the old uh, recorded sessions if you want. Okay, so let me cover this quickly. So as I said, cloud means what? So anything, uh, so you can see your server is somewhere else, your storage is somewhere else, you are somewhere else. All these are connected over the internet. Okay, now you want a house. If you want a house, you can go with the own house or you can go with the rented house. If you go with the own house, flooring you are responsible, landscape you are responsible, lighting you are responsible, tiles you are responsible, everything you are responsible. Okay, so electricity you are responsible, water you are responsible, plumbing you are responsible, everything, maintenance also you are responsible because it's a own house. So that means if you go with the on-premise operating system problems, you need to take care. Network, you need to take care. Servers, you need to take care. Storage, you need to take care. Application, you need to take care. Data, you need to take care. Everything you need to take care. So how about the renting? So if you go with the renting, everything you will get it, you will just pay rent and utilities. You will just pay rent and utilities. So there are so many people providing the cloud. There are so many people providing the cloud. Okay, so when I say so many people, so many companies, Amazon is providing, Google is providing, Yahoo is providing, so many companies are providing. You can choose whatever you want based on the your requirement. Okay, so these slides I already covered here. I am skipping. Okay, I'm skipping this. We already covered this. Okay, so this is one of the conclusion here. This is one of the slide from Microsoft. What Microsoft says is that in the next 20 years, in the next 20 years, the biggest, the biggest shift is cloud. So that means uh, as per the Microsoft, in the next 20 years, most of the companies will be in the cloud. Why? Because of tremendous cost cutting and pay as you go. That's it. Now cloud is available in the market in three ways, IAS, PAS and SAS. Let's say, okay, uh, okay, let's say Chenna is saying that, okay, my company is not having the cloud. Chenna is saying that my company is not having the cloud. So that means a network, storage, server, operating system, middleware, runtime, data, application. Like this, these are all required to develop the software, right? All these, their company is taking care. Okay, next, let's say Chennai is saying that, hey, my company is having IAS, infrastructure as a service. What does that mean? So the last, they are getting, last four, they are getting from vendor. First to five, they are taking care. So that means network, storage, server, visualization, 
they are getting from the vendor. So that means vendor can be Amazon, vendor can be Google, vendor can be someone else. So last four they are getting from vendor, first five they are taking care. Now let's say Ravi is telling that, hey, my company is having PAS. So last seven they are getting from the vendor. So that means network, storage, server, operating system, middleware, runtime, all these things, all these things they are getting from the vendor. First two, they are taking care. They means what, uh, let's say, Chroma company. Chroma company is taking care first two and last seven when they are getting from the vendor. Okay, last seven they are getting from the vendor. First two, their company is taking care. Okay, I already explained all these things here. That's why I'm going fast. Finally, finally, let's say, okay, uh, let's say Chennai is saying that my company is having SAS. SAS means everything they are getting from vendor. You can start using that. So best example is what? Let's say you are using Google Docs, right? Can I say Google Docs is SAS? Can I say Google Docs is SAS? Yes, Yes, everything is available. You can just start using it. You can start using it. That's it here. So therefore, uh, with the IIS, you are getting server storage network, right? That means you can deploy something here. You can host something here. With the PAS, you are getting server storage, also runtime. That means you can build the applications and you can deploy the applications. With the SAS, everything you are getting, you can start consuming it. You can start using it. That's the powerful conclusion here. With IIS, you can host it because you are getting server storage and all. With PIS, you can host and build because you are getting the runtime environment. With SAS, everything you are getting, that's why you can start consuming it. That's it. Okay, that's it. So that is about the cloud. Now, this cloud is available in two flavors ccv1 and ccv2 this cloud is available in two flavors from sap okay from sap so this cloud is available in two flavors ccv1 and the ccv2 ccv1 is the private cloud which is managed by sap okay private cloud so this is almost uh, deprecated or dead model sunset model that means no one is using now it's like a red color so now ccv2 everyone is using which is a public cloud so this is what everyone is using this is what everyone is using now you can ask a question let's say my company let's say a reliance company is having ccv2 so if Reliance company is having CCV2, then is that IAS, is that PAS? Now you need to ask the question. So the question is, is that CCV2 is the IAS or PAS or SAS? CCV2 is a combination of IAS and PAS. That means you can deploy, you can build. You can deploy, you can build. You can post and you can build. That's called CCV2. How to start with the CCV2, we'll see. Okay, how to start with the CCV2, we'll see. That's it. So that is the introduction of the CCV2 and the cloud. So let's recap quickly here. Let's say we have developed the website. Assume that we have developed this. After developing, we can deploy this in the on-premise. We can deploy this in the cloud. What is the meaning of on-premise? On-premise means the resources your company is taking care. When I say your company, right now it is a reliance or right now this is the chroma then resources that means operating system storage server okay network application all these things your company is taking care or you can use the cloud cloud means you will get the resources from the vendor as vendor is providing the resources like a server storage and all you will pay the rent for them you will pay the rent for them now <clears throat> So assume that we have developed this. Let's see how do we deploy this in the on-premise. Then we will see how to deploy this in the cloud. So two questions now. Let's say this is what we developed. Then question number one is how to deploy this in the on-premise. 
Okay, so how to deploy the, how to build and deploy. Right in on-premise. So this is the question number one. On-premise means environment, infrastructure, server, storage, all these things your company is providing. Then question number two is what? How to deploy this in cloud? How to build, deploy IT in cloud. So when I say cloud here, what is the meaning? I am discussing the CCB2. When I say cloud here, I am discussing the CCB2. CCB2 means Commerce Cloud version 2. Okay. Let's focus on the on-premise first. Let's focus on the on-premise first. This is the best diagram here to understand. Please pay attention and listen carefully. Okay. Are you guys are there? Okay, good. See how we will deploy this in the on-premise. How we will deploy this in on-premise? As I told you, <clears throat> we write the code where we write the code in the custom folder, right? In this extensions, we write the code. In this extensions, we write the code. So that means, uh, so let's say Chennai is writing the code in the uh, for the cart page. Ravi is writing the code in the checkout page. Triple RS is writing the code in the login page. So whether Chennai is writing, Ravi is writing, Triple RS is writing, most of the people will write the code in these extensions. Now, so let's say Chennai is writing. So uh, all the people write the code here only. Okay, so that means uh, I will be writing the code here. You will be writing the code here. Everyone will be writing the code here. Okay, so let's say Chennai is writing the code for the login login page. Okay, so Chennai is working on the login page. Okay, so let's say Ravi is working for cart page. And let's say Triple RS is working for checkout page. So this is the requirement. When multiple people are working on the same code base, do you need to manage this code centrally or you will just manage locally? Now multiple people are writing the code, right? I am writing, you are writing. Your code is required for me, my code is required for you. And your code, my code, Ravi code, everyone's code should go to the next environment. So therefore, if the situation is like this, then do we need to manage the code centrally? Do we need to manage the code? So that means version, versioning the code centrally. Yes or no? Centrally, yes. Yes. Okay. So because you are writing the code, I am writing the code. Okay, Triple RS is writing the code. Your code is required for me. My code is required for you. Okay, Chenna code is required for Triple RS. End of the day, all this code, your code, my code, everyone's code should go to the development environment, QA environment, some other environment at all. So therefore, do we need to manage the code, manage the code or version the code centrally? Answer is yes. Okay, answer is yes. For this purpose, we use code management repositories code manage repositories like a git or bit bucket okay, bit bucket like that so you can see here okay, so git bit bucket like that <laughs> we'll use this okay that's it <clears throat> so therefore what is the git what is the git bit bucket these are all the code managed repositories. Code managed repositories, those manage centrally. So therefore, when we set up the project, when we set up the project, please understand this here. I am explaining step by step. You need to understand. When we set up the project, right? 
so we keep all these custom extensions we keep all these custom extensions in uh, in repository in repository repository can be git or repository can be bitbucket whatever it may be not a matter so then what is the repository what is the git it's like a place right okay let me ask a question so you have the place called hard disk are you putting the files directly or you will create the folders are you are you putting in the files uh, are you putting the files directly or you will create folders oh, folders okay yes so therefore we keep all these extensions in repository repository can be git or bitbucket so inside the bitbucket or so i'll just consider the git here for now so inside the git so we have branches you can consider it as folder here that's it what is the meaning of branch we have branches so in the layman terminology folders so like uh, however you have c colon triple rs folder like that you have the branches so inside the git we have the branches branches you can visualize it as code then <clears throat> then so when we set up the project we create a branch called develop branch okay develop branch and keep all this default code in this okay so we create a develop branch and keep all these code is that clear so far okay so so you are writing the code i am writing the code everyone is writing the code so therefore you need to manage the code so to manage the code we need the repository so like a git repository bitbucket repository or something else okay so therefore when we set up the project so we keep all these extensions that means custom code okay in the repository so how do we keep by creating a folder by creating a branch called develop branch so we create the develop branch keep all this custom code there is that clear is that clear so far okay good now what is the requirement channa is doing login changes ravi is doing card changes triple rs is doing checkout changes right how these people do the changes so let's say this is a step number 1 now how different people do the changes how different people do the changes and deploy all the changes deploy all the changes changes to higher environments okay. apply all these changes to higher environments that let's understand now okay how different people do the changes vikas and kanna want to do login changes ravi want to do card changes triple rs want to do checkout changes and all so how different people do the all the changes and deploy the deploy all these changes in the higher environments for this this is the diagram for this this is the diagram can you see this one please you need to understand clearly here so the first one is as i said the code is available in the develop branch right the code is available in the develop branch so therefore triple rs will take the code into his local machine triple rs will take the code from the develop branch into his local machine okay so what uh, step number 1 right so let's say channa take the code from develop branch into his local machine when he is taking the code into his local machine do we, uh, uh, he has to give the name or he will just use the same name okay see channa take the code from develop branch what is the develop branch it is a centrally managed code 
okay so develop branch you can see develop branch this is there in the git okay now channa wants to do login changes ravi wants to do checkout changes triple rs want to do cart changes so therefore in the step number 1 channa will take the code from where from the develop branch into his local machine when he take into local machine do um, does channa needs to give the name or he will just go with the same name he can go with the same name here but uh, if channa is giving the same name ravi is giving the same name triple rs is giving the same name then it confuses that's why whenever you take the code give the name as feature slash so let's say i am doing the changes for what login login page like that you can give the name is that clear it's a just a name here it's not mandatory okay next similarly triple rs take the code from develop branch regards are paying into his local pc and he will name it as feature slash what is the triple rs changes checkout page like that you can give the name is that clear yes channa so channa someone else again Hmm? If someone else again take the same code, then a feature login page after channel someone takes, then they will change the name or. Okay, so if he, let's say I have done some login changes, now you want to work on top of that. Yes. Now you want to work on top of that, then you need to take the code from this. When you take from code from this, now we have two options. You can use the same name. Or you can give your own name. In that situation, you can give the same name. Not a problem because you are working for the login page. I am working for the login page. Let's say I have developed two features of login page, and you want to just do some UI validations for it. Just take this branch with the same name and commit your code with the same name. Commit your code with the same name. And if you want to give the different name, also no problem here. if you want to give the different name also no problem that's it so this is the step number 1 then step number 2 what is the step number 2 so now you do the changes in this feature branches test locally and commit it so step number 2 is do the changes locally in feature slash yyy branch and the test locally assume that all are good locally assume that all are good locally then channa will commit is login changes okay triple rs will commit his okay his uh, checkout page changes changes and so on to so on to login page changes checkout page changes and so on to so on to so that is what it is explained here can you see the diagram please okay that is what it is explained here you can see here so uh, take the code from the develop branch and give the feature slash something okay then in the feature slash something you do the changes and test locally so that means channa will have this code triple rs will have this code okay ravi will have this code everyone will have this code then channa will work on the login page ravi will work on the cart page triple rs will work on the checkout page and finally all these people will commit the code will the will they will commit the code when they commit the code okay their code will be committed into this branch instead of local so so let's say example here can you see this one please okay i have done the can you guys pay attention i have done the changes for the login page in this feature branch then if i am not committing if you take this feature branch you will not get my changes if i commit it then only it is available 
in the repository so that when you take this then you will get my changes is that clear what is the meaning of commit yes. is that clear what is the meaning of commit let's say i have done one change here in this feature branch in my machine then if you take the feature branch then you will not get my changes when you will get my changes if i commit my changes if i commit my changes my changes will be available in the repository then you will also get it you will also get it that's it like this you will commit your change i will commit my change ravi will commit his changes tribularis will commit the changes after commit it so step number 3 so uh, you raise the pr raise the pr so that means so where the channa uh, channa changes are in this right so he will create the pr to the develop branch okay you need to write the pr to the develop branch similarly okay so similarly uh, tribularis is working on the checkout right he will write the pr like this all the people will write the pr so channa will write this pr okay tribularis will write the pr pr means pull request so everyone will write the pr so that's what i mentioned here so everyone will write the pr then lead our architect okay lead our architect review the code review the code and merge it so what does it mean merge merge means so channa code will come to develop branch okay tribularis will code will come to develop branch so therefore all the people code will be available in the develop branch merge means what all the after merge after merging the merging the prs after merging the prs all the people code moved to develop branch is that clear so that is the meaning of merge so that generally lead our architect will do and if you lead our architect thinking that oh, code is something wrong then you will give the comment then you need to resolve the comments so let's say example you can see here so spartacus uh, github code you can see okay can you see this one please so there are so many people write the pr so you can see this guy has modified eight files are you guys are there so let's say uh, this person okay he has read, uh, he has modified eight files and uh, rising his feature branch are creating his feature branch to this so that means he is trying to move his changes into this branch like this you need to create the pr is that clear yes sir okay good okay so if you are not sure how to use the git and all you can just go to the google.com type git uh, git commands just uh, git commands or git command git commands okay top 20 top 20 git commands you can see here this is one of the tutorial where you have top 20 commands how to create the branch how to commit the code uh, okay how to clone the code how to uh, show the differences how to get the branches how to check out how to merge how to push how to pull these are the commands you need to learn it you need to practice it but i am only telling the results of those commands okay so therefore lead our architect will review the code and merge it after merge your code my code all the code is available in the develop branch then this develop branch they will deploy into development system are you guys are paying attention this develop branch they will deploy into development system now channa will go on test his changes ravi will go on test his changes okay and uh, uh, tribularis will go and uh, test his changes and uh, people confirms all the code is good or not 
okay so therefore individual okay deploy okay deploy the develop branch code into development system then what is the use of this system development system what is the use of the development system individual developers okay individual developers means in this case channa triple rs ravi all these people they will go and test their results can i say this is a unit testing or integration testing can i say integration this is the integration testing because you are changes my changes channa changes triple rs changes all the changes we are testing together and uh, so this is for the developer purpose purpose so therefore go and test the results if all the developer says good then if all developer says good then we will create a new branch called release from develop we will create one more branch we will create one more branch that is called release so this release will be created based on develop branch so that we can separate uh, the changes so we will create the release branch so this is the develop branch so therefore you can keep on push your changes to develop branch i will use the release branch to deploy into next environments is that clear it's kind of a decoupling are you guys are paying attention yes sir no. so it's kind of a decoupling so uh, now i will give the develop branch for you you can push it you can push it uh, channa can push it they can do whatever they want but uh, i have your tested copy tested copy in the release branch this release branch i will deploy into other environments this release branch i will deploy into other environments now so before deploy okay before deploy you need to understand one more point here now before deploy so right now uh, if you go here if you go to the uh, source if you go here if you go here if you go here do you see the source files do you see the source code files i see yes in the production do we maintain the source code files or do we maintain the compiled files compiled class files yes okay so generally in production before deploy uh, we do one step this is not mandatory but best practice definitely this is the best practice here <laughs> so recently when i was working with one client so they were deploying directly source code no <laughs> okay anyway that's good okay generally i was also surprised why they are having directly source code in the production but okay yeah anyway we cannot tell more than that let's come to here okay so before deploy we need to do one step that is for the best practice purpose what is that meaning so generally in production we will have compiled code so which is nothing but asterisk dot jar files compiled code grouped together which is nothing but jar files we will not have source code files we will not have source code files but right now it is a source code you can see right now this is a source code we don't want this we want to compile this and uh, group it as a jar files compiled code and group it as jar files this is what we want so therefore now it's time to generate the equivalent jar files for this now it's time to generate the equivalent jar files for this for that what i will do is that i will go to the platform are you guys are paying attention i will go to the platform and type and production 
if i type this command then it is going to generate the equivalent jar files for those extensions so that means after typing ant production after ant production okay after ant production so i will be having the jar files you can see here like this i will be having the jar files i will be having the jar files no source code like this so uh, for core extension uh, star core jar file for uh, uh, star core extension so star core jar file okay fulfillment jar file like that jar files get generated no source code it's a jar files now now here we have a store fend extension right for this store fend extension store fend extension is nothing but the ui right so that's why there is no jar file for it store fend extension will be as is for remaining extensions it will create the compiled code and merged together all the compiled code into jar file that is the purpose of the ant production that is the purpose of the ant production is that clear are you guys are there yes sir no. okay good okay so therefore before deploy we do one step called ant production what is the advantage of the ant production when we do the ant production so for core extension there is a star so here star means what channa triple rs training channa triple rs training cores dot jar file channa triple rs training facade dot jar file like that jar files will be generated compiled file will be generated so no more source code that is the advantage of the ant production then this jar files will be deployed into the next environment Can you see this one please so we will run the ant production this ant production will give the jar files this jar files we will deploy into the next environment maybe qa environment so this asterisk dot jar files okay uh, will deploy in next environment which is a qa environment or sit environment QA environment or SIT environment. Then what is the use of this uh, uh, QA environment, SIT environment? Let's say Proma company doing, uh, sorry, let's say uh, Cognizant CTS company doing the Proma project. Are you guys are paying attention? Okay, CTS company doing the Proma project. From CTS company, from CTS company, so there will be testing team, right? They will do the validations in QA system or SIT system. QA system or SIT system. Is that clear? What is the purpose of this system? Okay, so therefore we do the development locally, then we deploy into development system. Individual developers will do the validations, then deploy into QA system or SIT system. There, IT testing team. So that means if Cognizant is doing the, if Cognizant is doing the project for Chroma company, from Cognizant, from Cognizant there is a testing team. They will do the validations here and they will confirm everything is good so assume that sit is good sit is done sit is done means uh, so the testing team from the it company is done then we will deploy the same we will deploy the same into another environment called uit environment we will deploy the same into another environment called the UIT environment. So next, 
So after SIT, we will deploy the same this uh, uh, jar files. Same asterisk dot jar files. So in a simple word, custom folder into next environment that is equal to UAT environment. Then what is the purpose of UAT environment? Let's say CTS is doing the project for Chroma company. Then from Chroma company, testing team will be there, right? Testing team will be there, right? They will do the validations. That's why these are called the business validation. So from Chroma company, testing team will do the validations. So that's why these, these are called the business validations. That's why these are called the business validations. So assume that uh, uh, business validations are done. Okay, so business validations are done. Everything is good. Then we will deploy the same custom code which is having the jar files and all into the next environment called the production environment. So we will deploy the same asterisk dot jar files in bracket custom folder. Okay, so into next environment that's called the production. So what is the purpose of the production? Production is for the end users. Okay, so now let's say I click on chroma.com. Is it the production system, development system, or UAT system, or uh, QA system? Is it a production system, or a UAT system, or a QA system, or a SIT system, or a development system? Which one is this? Production. Production. So therefore, production is for end customers. So, so this is the life cycle, how it will happen. This is the life cycle, how it will happen. So then after deploying into production, after deploying to production and assume that everything is good. Assume that everything is good. If everything is good, then we will create one more branch called master branch from release. Okay, we'll create one more branch called master branch from release. So that means, so master branch is having what? Production tested code. Production certified code. Is that clear? Production certified code, we are merging into master branch. So this is the purpose of, now tomorrow, let's say after, okay, so after 100 days, so you want to, start a new development project okay you want to start a some upgrade project upgrade project so tell me from where you take the code feature branch develop branch release branch master branch master branch okay excellent master branch so from master branch so create a develop hyphen upgrade like that then start doing the changes so that is the purpose of the master branch okay release branch feature branch develop branch that is the purpose of development system sit system qa system production system that is the purpose of the git branch that is the purpose of the ant production that's all here so this is covering many dots here so the first one is ant production. Second one is what is the use of these systems. Third one is what is the purpose of these branches and so on, so, so on, so Now, if you have any questions on this, you can ask me. No questions? No, Chandra. Are you guys are there? Am I disconnected? No, Chandra. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so this conference will now be recorded. All right, very good. So now we understand uh, what is the meaning of a development system, UAT system, QA system, production system, local system, what is the meaning of feature branch, develop branch. Okay, 
uh, uh, release branch, master branch, bug fix branch, all those things. And uh, what is the purpose of the each system and all? Now, some companies note some companies okay so will not have sit system and the uid system so that means some companies some companies will have only one system for sit and uid in this case what happened in this case so sit team and uid team should share the same system that's it so when i was working in one of the project that client is not giving that many systems that means that client is having only development systems and directly they have the uat system and after that directly production system so that means in this situation it testing team and business validations will happen in the same system is that clear okay so that means a uh, chroma company validation team and a cognizant company validation team will use the same system in this scenario will use the same system in this scenario next note in case of cloud also in case of cloud also so when i say cloud here what is the meaning ccv2 in case of cloud also so we will have d1 system which is a development system s1 system which is a staged system and we will have t1 system which is a production system so that means if your company if your company is having ccv2 if your company is having ccv2 then you will have d system development system s system stage system t system production system that's it now if your company specifically ask ask they want if your company specifically ask they want separate sid system and the separate uit system okay are you guys are paying attention if your yes. company specifically ask they want separate sit system separate uit system then then what you will do is that what you will get is you will get a development system then you will get the two staged systems s1 system s2 system like that you will get the two staged systems is it clear you will get the two staged systems okay then you will get the production system so s1 you can use for sit validations and s2 you can use for uat validations it just a uh, uh, it it is just a difference that's it you will get two systems you can name it as one is for uh, sit validations one is for uat validations for each systems you need to pay something so if your company really want it you will get one more staged system and uh, once you get the system it is your responsibility how you want to use it you can use s1 for uat or s1 for sit s2 for uat s2 for sit you can switch it and use however you want but by default three systems will be there d system which is a development system s system which is a stage system p system which is a production system on top of that you can request whatever you want so if your company says hey i want two development systems they will give it so let's say uh, um, you want one development system for development purpose one development system for a production path purpose then you need to have two development systems so you can have in case of ccv2 in case of ccv2 you can you means here uh, client you can request whatever systems you want 
So for example, you want a three development system, yes, you can request, but you need to pay for those. And you want a two, uh, four staged systems or two staged systems, four staged systems because you have the purpose, then one production system always one here. <laughs> Production system always won't. Don't say that, okay, production system, I'll have multiple production systems. So you can request whatever systems you want and make sure you are paying for those. You need to pay for those. That's it. So this is how it will work in the CCB2. Next. Next. Okay. Mm. Uh, can we have uh, two websites uh, with two different databases? Two website, two different databases. Yes, you can same, uh, in the same uh, staging system. Two websites. One website is pointing to different database. Another website is pointing to different database. Yes, yes, yes. That is possible. So let's say this is the Chroma ABC Chroma dot ABC website, which is connected to Oracle, or which is connected to different database. And this is right now, please remember this, the database in the CCV2 is fixed in Azure SQL DB. So you don't have that much flexibility to use your own DB. Right now in the CCV2, it is a fixed database. But when you say different database, I am considering it as commerce perspective. So let's say here a cart table is having 20 columns. It, it, here it may be having 14 columns. That context I am telling. Okay. Yes. Same. Yes, that is possible. Okay. That how, is possible. How, we, how, how can we configure it? Like in local dot properties, we only specify one database uh, connection, right? Uh, connection. Mm, this properties. is having its own. Uh, uh, this is having its. See, that's what, right? When you say different site, obviously different code base also you will have, right? Uh, I want to deploy both of them in same uh, S one system. Same S1 system, what does it mean? Because if I don't want to pay for extra, uh, for S2, uh, staging 2, uh, I don't so want to pay extra. you want to deploy multiple, multiple sites in the same environment? Uh, yes. But yes, that uh, is possible. Those, those, those sites will be using uh, different databases and items.xml will be different for each site. No, no. Okay, code base is always same. You cannot have multiple item.xml files like that. Okay. You can have multiple item.xml file, but uh, those will be created, those will be executed when you perform the update. See, update is HSE update, HSE initialization is same, right? So yes, let's sir. say you have a ABC, that is not at all a requirement here, first of all. ABC item.xml file, and you have coded something in the party table like that. Now you have XYG hyphen item.xml. So here you have coded order related. Then when you perform initialization, both will be executed because it's the same code base. Yes, yes. You cannot control it. That is not a scenario at all. Okay. Yeah, just to save the cost for creating new S2, just thinking that one. Yeah. Okay. What is the use of this? Uh, that I understand. But what is the use of this? Creating some tables for one side, creating some tables for another side. That, that usage is not there because deployment environment is same. So because let's say you have a power tool site, you have a electronic site. Yes, you can put both sites. That is possible. But power tool sites, whether it is using it or not, it's all how you coded it. But those will be created. Let's okay. Say for card table, you have uh, you have created a custom table called ABC. Power tools may use, may not use. That is how you coded it. That's it. But at the end of the day, those are created. Okay. okay. Now okay. let's continue the next one here. So now you are deploying. Now you need to understand what is the meaning of zero downtime deployment. So there is a terminology called zero downtime deployment. So what does that mean? Okay, zero downtime deployment. What does that mean? Or uh, this is also called as rolling deployment. So this is what the all see. Till this topic, whatever I explained, those are applicable for on-premise and uh, cloud. Till this topic, till this rolling deployment, whatever I explained, are applicable for on-premise and cloud. 
Okay, so what is the meaning of roaring deployment or what is the meaning of zero downtime deployment? Let me ask a question. So, did you ever see Amazon.com is uh, down? Saying that, hey, we are deploying the new code, wait for some time like that? No. Mostly no. Mostly no. There can be, but mostly no. Does that mean that Amazon is not deploying any code? Does that mean that Amazon is not yeah. deploying any code? No, they are. They are deploying. Then how that deployment procedure is working? Let's understand now. Okay. So let's say you have a restaurant. Okay. So this is a restaurant. This is the simplest way to understand here. Okay. Uh, this is the restaurant. For the restaurant, so many people are coming. So this is the best way to understand the quickly whatever I want to convey. So this is the restaurant. So many people are coming. Similarly, I have a Chroma website. For Chroma website, so many web, uh, people are coming. So that means you are hitting the Chroma. I am hitting the Chroma. Everyone is hitting the Chroma. Now tell me, when so many people are coming to restaurant, you will have multiple servants or only one servant? Multiples. You will have multiple servants. Okay, you will have multiple servants. Okay, similarly, when so many people are coming to Chroma, you will have multiple computers, we call it as multiple nodes. So here we call it as multiple nodes. Is that clear? So this is the best way to understand this simplest concept. A big concept in the simplest way. So here we call it as servants. So here we call it as nodes. Node is like a, you can visualize as a computer, let's sit here. Okay, node. Now, when multiple servants are there, when multiple servants are there, let's say so many people are coming to your restaurant and multiple servants are there, multiple desks are there, is there a front person who is uh, monitoring which place is free, which servant is free like that? Yes or no? Is there a friend person who will check which uh, table is free, which servant is free to serve these people? To sleep. Huh? Yes or no? Yes. <laughs> Yes, sir. Okay, there is a friend person, right? So, so similarly, so what is the purpose of this friend person? He will check which table is free, which servant is free, and uh, he will ask, okay, hey, Channa, okay, this servant is free, this table is free, go there. Hey, Triple RS, this uh, servant is free, go, this table is free, go there like that. This is the friend person. Similarly, here also we have friend person. We call it as load balancer. Okay, so load balancer. What is the purpose of the load balancer? This load balancer will check which node is free, which node is having time, which node is servicing less, so that it will send the request to that particular node to service it. Okay, good. So far, good. Now, the next point is let's say uh, this servant is working, this servant is working, this servant is working. All these servants are working with the same rules and regulations or different, different. All these servants are working with the same rules and regulations? Yes or no? You can unmute and speak please. All these servants are working with the same rules and regulations and they need the food, right? Yes. They need the food. They need the energy. They need the energy. So for computer energy is nothing but the code, right? The computer energy is nothing but the code. So yes, these people, these people need the energy, need the food. These computers, okay, whatever you have the site, they need the code. Okay, now tell me, 
so now these people need the energy that means food do you leave them to uh, do, do you tell them hey go to the food now do, do you leave all the people to go for the food now at once or you will you will tell them go one by one go one by one go one by one so let's say at 130 if you leave all these servants for the food then you need to close your restaurant that is nothing but to set down our website so therefore what you will do you will send one by one for lunch similarly here also we deploy one by one code so that means let's say first this person is going for lunch then remaining people will serve the request similarly so this person or this node i am deploying that means this node is down then remaining three nodes will be there to to serve the request now this person will complete the food and come back then this person will go for food then these three people will serve the request similarly this node will be down and the remaining nodes will serve the clients like that in each node we will put the code one after one so that means first i will set down this node put the code here so let's say to put the code i need 10 minutes then in that 10 minutes these three nodes will serve the customer next so the code is done here then i will set down this node and put the code here so let's say putting the code is taking 10 minutes then that 10 minutes these three nodes will serve the request like this we will set down node one by one and put it that's why this is called zero downtime zero downtime or rolling deployment rolling deployment is what first i am setting down this and putting the code here and bring back then i am setting down this putting the code here and bring back so let's say this is taking 10 minutes in that 10 minutes these three will serve the client these three will serve the client like that i will take each node down and put the code bring back put the code bring back similar to this so i will send this person at 12 o'clock for lunch then these three people will serve it then this guy will come back by 12 30 then 12 30 this guy will go for lunch then these three people will serve then this guy can come by 11 uh, 1 o'clock 1 o'clock this person will go for lunch then these three people will serve the customers this is called a rolling deployment or zero downtime deployment rolling deployment or zero downtime deployment is that clear everyone is that clear everyone okay yeah. now you can ask one question so does that mean that every time rolling deployment will work does that mean that every time okay so does that mean every time okay zero downtime works or uh, zero downtime works may not sometimes you need to set down system system and do the deployment set down the system set down the site set down the system means set down the site and do the deployment so when when so assume that you have done lots of data model changes here so assume that as part of the deployment you have lots of data model changes then go for site down and deployment then go for site down and deployment is that clear why why so let's say you have created 20 tables and the relations and all and one of the relation is uh, linking with the user table one of the uh, uh, one of the table which you created is linking with the cart table 
Now assume that you deployed the code here. This will work and remaining will may break because the database is same for all. Database is same for all. So that's why if you are saying that you have lots of data model changes, better shut down and you do the deployment. Shut down and do the deployment. Is that clear everyone? Is that clear everyone? You guys are there. Okay, so this is about rolling deployment or zero downtime deployment. And uh, so mostly zero downtime deployment will go, but when to when rolling deployment or zero downtime deployment is not best when you have lots of data model changes. When you have lots of data model changes, that is not good. You can shut down the site and do the changes or do the deployments. That's it. So till now. Okay, whatever discussed are applicable for cloud also. That's it. This is the simple straightforward conclusion. Till now, whatever we discussed are applicable for CCB2 also, cloud also. That's it. Till now, whatever we discussed, um, whatever we discussed are applicable for cloud also. Then what is the, okay. So now come back here, please. This is a nice conclusion you need to understand. Now you want to deploy this site in the cloud. In case of cloud, can you please pay attention? So you need to understand this here. So in case of cloud, these two, can you guys pay attention? Can you guys pay attention? Okay, so in case of on-premise, all three you are responsible. Okay, so I am just putting this simplest way. So in case of on-premise, all these three you are responsible. You need to manage all these three. On-premise, all these three you are responsible. If it is an on-premise, in case of cloud, in case of cloud, okay, <laughs> you are responsible for only custom coding. Remaining two, they will provide it. So in case of cloud, you are responsible for this. Cloud, when I say cloud, CCV2 here. In case of cloud, so you are responsible for this. So these two vendor will provide. Vendor will provide. Okay. Now vendor means what in this situation? Let's say SAP. So vendor means what uh, SAP? How SAP knows? Okay. Can you guys see the questions, please? This is what the questions you need to understand. These two vendor will provide, right? Now question number one. How vendor, vendor means SAP, CCV2. How vendor knows what SAP, this is a, can I say this is the SAP commerce? Modules and platform is nothing but the SAP commerce, yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. How vendor, vendor means CCV2 or SAP knows what SAP commerce version you, you means let's say chroma want. That's the question number one. Okay, so question number one is what? Okay, question number one is what? How vendor knows what SAP commerce you want? You need to tell, right? Hey, I want this, I want a, a 2005 version, I want 2011 version, so that they will provide. Question number two. How Vendor knows, okay, what are your custom extensions? What are the names of your custom? See, you are responsible for, see, first question is what? How vendor knows what SAP commerce you want, whether you want 2005, whether you want 2011 like that. Okay, so that means you need to tell them that, hey, I want 2005. You need to tell them that I want 2205. 
you need to tell that means you need to tell okay so you need to tell to vendor that you want 2205 version how to tell i will tell next is second question how vendor knows where is your custom code where is how vendor knows custom code details you need to tell them right because it's it's it, you need to tell them because you have written the code so you need to tell them custom code you need to tell to vendor about the custom code location okay custom code location next third question uh, as part of the development do you remember we change uh, this uh, local dot properties and all right we change this local dot properties we change this local extension and all yes or no yes how vendor knows what you changed how vendor knows what you changed so you need to tell them Okay, I'm just putting very clearly here so that I can give the nice conclusion. That's it. One line conclusion, it will help everything here. So these also you are responsible. Okay, so these also you are responsible. Okay, so now the next question is what? How vendor knows what extensions you want Oh, vendor. Vendor means here CCV2 knows what extensions you, you means here Chroma want. So, uh, this information is available where? This information, what extensions you want. You want uh, promo okay. extensions, you want, uh, yes. Okay. okay. So, you need to tell them. You need to tell to vendor. So that is available where in the local extensions that XML. Similarly, local dot properties. Okay, so I'll write one more question. What is the one more question? Question number four. Okay, so as part of the project, we might have been used so many properties. Okay, as part of the, uh, then you need to also tell local dot properties and so on, so, so on. Environment specific properties. Yes. Like this, we have n number of questions. Like this, we have n number of questions. That means it's time to input because this platform vendor provides. This platform vendor provides, then whatever you are doing, whatever you want, you need to tell them so that they will provide, so that they will read it, so that they will understand. Are you guys are paying attention? Yes, you know. Is the best way to understand the sim, uh, complex topic. Now I will give the conclusion. So that means uh, in case of uh, CCV2 platform modules vendor will provide. If vendor is providing two things. You need to tell what you want from vendor. You need to tell what you have done so that they will take and execute it. So mainly two questions. So question number one is what? You need to you need to input what you want from them. So let's say SAP Commerce version. Okay. So let's say SAP Commerce version. You need to tell what you want from them. SAP Commerce version. Okay. So then the second question is what? You are doing so many changes, right? When I say you here, your company let's say chroma okay so you you means here chroma doing so many changes so how ccv2 knows so therefore you need to tell your custom code custom changes to vendor vendor means ccv2 here 
so that it will take and execute it so that it will take and execute it that's it so that it will take and execute it so therefore uh, now the question is how do i input all this information so the final question what is the final question how do i input all these information so the answer is manifest.json so the answer is manifest.json so therefore you can specify all this information in the manifest.json so that ccb2 can read what you want what commerce version you want what extensions you want what custom code you have written what properties you are using all these things it will understand from the manifest.json so therefore what is the main input for the ccb2 what is the main input for ccb2 okay so manifest.json file so from manifest.json manifest.json ccb2 can understand ccb2 can understand okay so what uh, sap commerce client want okay so what the extensions client is using okay what uh, properties client is using what urls are required what urls are required and so on so on so and to provide and accordingly provides accordingly is that clear provides accordingly is that clear so that's why in a simplest way okay in a simplest way ccv2 code equal to on premise code plus manifest.json plus few additional this additional is optional that's it here this is the simplest fantastic conclusion what are those additional ones like your heart folder that this and all okay okay <laughs> okay your favorite heart folder azure block storage okay so that's it here but what is the what is the key thing ccv2 code equal to on premise code plus manifest.json that is a main important thing after that additional additional means what like the art folder changes some other changes some other changes this is the this is about the ccv2 so therefore whatever we have done will work in the commerce cloud version 2 but so in case of commerce cloud version 2 these two vendor will provide now how do i tell to ccv2 i need a commerce version 22 version 2205 version how do i tell to ccv2 i have done the custom changes how do i tell to ccv2 these extensions are required how do i tell to ccv2 these properties are required those are all you can mention in the manifest.json so therefore what is the biggest input for the manifest.json sorry what is the biggest input for the ccv2 ccv2 input is manifest.json in the manifest.json you can define whatever you want so ccv2 can understand what client uh, uh, commerce version is required what extensions are required what because you need to tell all these things in that okay so ccv2 can understand below details below details from okay uh, from manifest.json ccv2 can understand below details from manifest.json ccv2 can understand below details what sap commerce client want okay what extensions client want what properties client want all these things so it is your responsibility to define the manifest.json now so therefore to use ccv2 ccv2 it's your responsibility your means proma okay responsibility responsibility to define the manifest.json now it's your responsibility to define the manifest.json now how to define this manifest.json and how to deploy it and all we'll see tomorrow 
Okay, so it you are you are means Chroma responsibility because we have done the custom coding, right? See, on premise coding we have done it. Then you need to write the manifest JSON. How to write the manifest JSON? What to specify in the manifest JSON? That is your responsibility. That means you need to write it. You need to define it. So how to define this manifest JSON? We'll see tomorrow, and we will also see how to set up all those things step by step. That's all for today. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and ask. Else, we are good for today.